Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more Tyrion Cuthbert, Tourney of the Arcane. We're going to go into our third case now, so we need to go into new game, and we're going to go over to the Origins of Horus here, case number three. Let's see what this is about. Frey Cuthbert, so... Was that probably his mum? No. He didn't know his parents, did he? I'm not sure. Frey Cuthbert. I'm sorry, Tyrion. There were so many things that I wanted to tell you. So many things that I wanted to show you. But I'm afraid that I can't do that now. I need you to be strong now. This world is bleak, merciless and unforgiving. But I've seen you. I know how bright the light within you is. Use my eyes. Peer beyond the divine gate, as I once did. Use it to reclaim the future. Episode 3, The Origins of Horus. Uh, so in these cases where I don't know who the person is, I'm just going to voice them initially neutrally until I know, you know, kind of their whole deal. So, um, preposterous, completely and utterly preposterous. Oh, hello. Uh, is something wrong, Lord Von Sanctus? I mean, he looks French to me. <laughs> I don't know why. You filthy rat, you cheated, didn't you? That's right, you are just a cheat, a cheat and a charlatan. Occupation Nobleman. Uh, do you have evidence to prove that ridiculous claim? I must chase before you can crawl out of whatever rat hole you came from. Do you honestly expect anyone to believe that you could defeat me? Honestly, I'm just as disappointed as you are. I was expecting more of a challenge from House von Sanctus. But I suppose all the gold in the, gold in the world can't buy you a modicum of skill. You little upstart, I'll... Uh... <clears throat> Von Sanctus's acquaintance clears his throat and gestures subtly to the crowd of spectators. Everyone's attention is on him, and you can see the crowd muttering amongst themselves. His undignified behaviour probably isn't doing any favours for his public image. Realising himself, he tries to regain his composure. Hmm, <clears throat> it's preposterous! He walks away, muttering the word preposterous under his breath a few more times. It sounds like he's trying to reassure himself more than anyone else. So, that was, um, something. Yeah, I knew he'd get angry, but I didn't expect him to make a scene like that. Well, you did insult him. Not to say that he didn't deserve it. Ah, uh, come on. I love seeing these conceited nobles lose their minds when I beat them. It's half of the fun of playing these tournaments. Wow, where's his confidence when we're in the courthouse? That's... Uh, a court case is a different... I have to deal with real-world elements during a trial, and that includes Prosecutor Steelwind. Prosecutor Steelwind, huh? I wonder if she plays chess. Now there's a thought. You wonder if she'd be willing to play against you sometime. She can't be any worse than these pampered nobles. Anyways, we should celebrate somewhere in town. Even if he was a pushover, you'd just beat one of the top-ranked chess players in the kingdom. To be honest, you had your reservations about returning to the city of Oranax. If you weren't facing one of the four pillars, you would have never come back here. You'd rather leave this city as soon as possible. I saw a cafe while we were walking around. The food smelled great. I'd really like to go there. Well, we could always go to one of the cafes in the capital. There are plenty of places to choose from there. Trust me, I've travelled around the world. There's nothing better than food from a thriving port city. Hmm. Yeah, Alright, I suppose there's no harm in staying a little longer. She does have a point. The streets seem livelier than when you last saw them. You see a lot of businesses that weren't here before, and they all seem to be very well off. Despite being a port city, Oranax used to look like a ghost town. Has the local nobility been investing in the city? You find that possibility very hard to believe. You arrive at the cafe that Celeste told you about. As you enter, you're struck by a powerful aroma of freshly baked pastries and coffee. The scent of the baked goods swirls around you. You take a moment to high inhale the enticing smells. You have to admit that it's making you very hungry. Uh, okay, so again, don't know who this person is, so so you seek to enter the domain of the Deathbringer Songstress. Uh, okay, um, maybe she's going to be French as well. Well, if glory is what you seek, then look no further. For you stand before Musurika. Oh, Musurika, that sounds a bit more Russian, doesn't it? For you stand before Musurika Tutu, Dark Lord of Orinax. As you head further into the cafe, you're approached by a familiar face. 
Musurika Tudor, merchant. Oh. Rika? Is that you? Ha, it appears that my reputation precedes me. How good of you to... Wait, you're Tyrion? You're... you're back! Uh, hi. You? Why didn't you to tell it anyone's you were back in town? Do you have any idea how worried we've all been? Uh, do you two know each other? Right, uh, Celeste, this is Musurika Tudor. I was friends with her when I lived here many years ago. Wait, you used to live here? Yeah, Oranax is actually the town I grew up in. What? But you were in such a hurry to leave before. Oh, we made Musurika sad. You came here to eat, right? If you're still hungry, I can bring you some of our best dishes on the house. Uh, no, no, I couldn't possibly. Come on, don't be like that. It's been years since I've seen you. And you know how good my food is. Okay, but only for a little while. Rika sets a table for the three of you and calls over a waiter. You will place your orders. Now, tell me everything. I want to know all about what you've been doing since you left. Okay. So, are you going to introduce us? Right, uh, this is Celeste McCoy. She's my bodyguard. Bodyguard? And Celeste, this is... Ha! As if I need such introductions. I am Musurika Tudor, Dark Lord Voronex, High Alc Magi of the Cadmium Flames, and the proud proprietor of this cafe. Oh, okay. I was friends with... I was friends with her when I used to live here. She's a little eccentric, but she's a good person at heart. Hey! She's also a common folk mage like you. Ah, so you come from the same humble beginnings that I do. Which spells have you mastered? Hmm, I haven't really mastered any of them. I know about seven s uh, spells, though. Seven? That's almost four times the amount that I know. So she knows two. <laughs> She's learned even more spells? She's been picking them up rather quickly. I've been you sort. Look at you, Mr. Big Shot. You're wearing suit now, and you even have a bodyguard. Did you get an office job in the big city? Something like that. I'm actually a defense attorney now. A defense attorney? I see. Is that why you left town with that scary lady? Scary lady? Are you talking about Ruby? Uh, Mr. Moore adopted me when my mother um, passed several years ago. After that, she began training me to become an attorney like her. Wait, you've been studying to be an attorney since you were a kid. Well, I guess that explains why you're so young for a lawyer. Said the 19-year-old mercenary. Yeah, I guess you got me there. Are you the owner of this cafe, Rika? We always spoke about opening one when we were kids. Yep, and it's all thanks to the Dracogen Trading Company. The company's owner and invested in my business idea after trying my food. Because of him, I was able to open up here, just like I've always dreamed. Uh, Dracogen Trading Company? I don't think I've heard of them. They're pretty small right now, and they're only operating in Oranax. But I hear that they're planning to expand their operations throughout Wivengard. But I would have thought that Lord Von Sanctus would have weeded out any competition. After all, he owns one of the largest businesses in the kingdom. Lord Von Sanctus? I isn't he that pompous noble that I beat in the chess tournament this morning? Wait, that was you? I didn't even know he was a businessman. Von Sanctus Industries invented those arcane constructs that we saw at the Imperial Academy. How do you not know of these things? You practically fight against nobles for a living. Hmm, maybe you should start reading more about national politics. Is it just me, or does the city look less, um, depressing than before? Oh, right, you left the city before the new merchants appeared. N new merchants? Like from a merchant's guild? Yeah, the Dracogen Trading Company was one of the first ones. They started operating here and brought the arcane refinery a few years ago. After that, merchants from all over Wivengard had started coming here. Well, being based in a port city would definitely give them the edge. And their presence has really helped the city's economy. They aren't owned by the nobility, and they pay their employees a lot more than Von Sanctus does. He's really improved the quality of life for the people here. I doubt Von Sanctus appreciates the competition, though. Eh, there's even talk about forming employee-run unions. Oh, Von Sanctus definitely would appreciate that. So, you still play chess? Yeah, I'm nationally ranked, too. I heard that an upstart commoner defeated Lord Von Sanctus at a tournament this morning, but I had no idea they were talking about you. Upstart commoner? <laughs> the name suits you, Tyrion. Hey, do you still do that thing when you play? No. What thing? Nothing. She's not talking about anything. Where, do you actually embarrassed about it? When we were kids, you did it even more than I did. Whoa, 
not? What did he used to do? Oh, why don't you show her a Tyrion? I'd rather not. Come on, show us Tyrion. The thing. <laughs> I think I'm a little too old for this. You're not too old to tap into your inner chuni. Do it, Tyrion. Yeah, do it. The two of them begin chanting, trying to pressure you. Do it, do it. <laughs> it draws the attention of the other patrons in the cafe. They don't seem to care about the confused looks that they're getting. <sighs> it seems you don't have a choice. You're taking a deep breath. Those who stand in the shadows, those who fear the light of divinity. Your Imperials will fall and your armies will perish. Kneel and cower before the divine gaze of the Eye of Horus. <gasps> They're trying their hardest to contain their laughter. Well, that's why I don't do it anymore. No, no, that was uh, great. It was really cool, Tyrion. Her poorly contained laughs are coming out between each word. In white, and why are you laughing? You were just doing it a moment ago. Yeah, but she owns it. Uh... You used to say something else before, too. I won't let anyone stand in my way, even if they're... A man, king or god? Yeah, that's it. He still says that sometimes. Oh, looks like our order is here. A waiter brings in the lunch special for each of you. The enticing aroma of the meals makes you salivate a little. You gladly devour the meal. Rika's cooking is just as delicious as you remembered. You spend some more time catching up with her while you finish your meal. As your conversation continues, you and Celeste regale her with stories of your past court cases. No, really? Yep, it turned out that it was the headmaster the entire time. Wow, I would never have figured that out. How did you know, Tyrion? Maybe he saw it with his eye of Horus. You nearly choke on your drink before you realize what she's actually referring to. Oh, but wow, I can't believe it. I never thought court cases could be that dramatic. You finish your meal as you continue to tell Rika about more about your cases. It's nice being able to talk with her again. You tried so hard to leave everything behind after what happened. But you're happy that she seems to be doing well. Well, it's been nice catching up with you, Rika. But I think it's time for us to get going. What? But we just got here. Oh, we made Rika sad. Yes, okay. I'm sure you're pretty busy nowadays. I won't keep you any longer. But be sure to write, okay? Don't just go and disappear like last time. Yeah, I'll stay in touch. You'd better. <clears throat> you exit the cafe and make your way to the local merchant's guild to rent a carriage. The city streets seem a bit more crowded than usual. It's a little difficult to make your way through them. Hey, Tyrion. Yeah? Um... Celeste is fidgeting with her hands. She looks like she wants to say something, but every time she starts to speak, she quickly stops herself. This happens a few more times before she seems to give up. Never mind, it's nothing. Okay. You both continue to walk silently as you'll make your way to the Merchant's Guild. As you make your way there, the streets become more and more crowded. You hope the traffic won't interfere with the ride home. Hi, could we rent a carriage for travel to Ratum? He looks like the merchant from the village in the first one. Sorry, but travel outside the city is temporarily closed. What? Why? Haven't you heard? The Kellen Knights of the King's Guard have locked down the city. They set up a blockade and everything. Check the city gates if you don't believe me. As you arrive at the city gates, you see the blockade that the merchant was talking about. A crowd of disgruntled townsfolk are angrily shouting at the knight stationed there. This is outrageous. How long do you plan on keeping us here? Sorry, but we've got our orders. We can't let anyone outside of the city until our investigation's complete. There's an investigation? Did something happen? Can you at least tell us what's going on? Why is the entire city being blockaded? Sorry, sir, we're not allowed to release that information. You'll just have to make other arrangements while we sort this out. Actually, I've seen you two around before. I need to take down your names and occupations for our records. What? Why? It's fine, Celeste. We're better off just cooperating with them. It's an invasion of privacy, but you'd rather not resist orders from the King's Guard. I'm Tyrion Cuthbert. I'm a defense attorney. Ah, oh, fine. I'm Celeste McCoy, bodyguard. Thanks. You look over to the other King's Guard. They seem to be taking notes of the other people here too. They must be making a list of everyone inside the city. But for what reason? Or an axe blockade. I have an important engagement tomorrow. What am I supposed to do now? This can't be possible this can't possibly be legal. The townsfolk continue shouting at the knights, but it's clear they won't be budging anytime soon. Ah, uh, what do we do now? 
You notice that it's starting to get late. Oh, we don't know how long the city will be blockaded. We should find a place to stay overnight, just in case. You walk into a nearby tavern and see it absolutely crowded with patrons. Hmm, sounds like everyone else had the same idea. Hey, welcome to the Yeguin Tavern. What can I do for you? Uh, can we get two rooms for the night? Sorry, I can't even spare one room. We're completely full with the blockade and all. Um, well, let me take care of this. Celeste takes out a large pou pouch of gold and plops it on the innkeeper's desk. Hmm. Well, <laughs> would you look at that? One of our rooms just opened up. Only one? Hey, the entire city's locked down. Even with your gold, that's the best I can do for you. What? Embarrassed to share a room with me, Tyria? No, no, it's just, um... You realise that she's just te teasing you like she usually does. Best not to give it any mind. Well, it's better than nothing. So, how should we, uh... Oh, I was just kidding before. You can have the bed. I'll just sleep on the floor. What? I, I can't just let you. Please, we may not both be... We may both be commoners, but you live a cushy life in the city. I'm a mercenary. I've lived on the road for years. I sleep like this all the time. She's got you there. All right, but tell me if you change your mind. Yeah, yeah. Hey, didn't see you there. I was just, uh... Oh, just walked past him. What? Hey, watch it. Quit shoving me. Wait. Whoa. Holy crap. Pull me up. I can't hold on for much longer. Ah, oh, you idiot. What are you doing? What? Grab his arm and pull him up. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, my hand. What the hell are you doing? Your grip is too tight. Stop that. Ah. But wait, I can still... No. No, no, no. What happened? I should have been able to... Ah, oh, but that scaled lord, he fell in. I... No, I can use this. That's right, I can still make this look like it was all his fault. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> we'll save our progress. I reserve the right to change uh, voices depending on what those people actually end up looking like. All right. You find yourself falling into a nightmare. Tyrion, I'm so sorry. I can't believe they made you watch. Are you okay? Right, of course not. Are you going to keep fighting them? Your voice is quiet. Your question barely comes out as a whisper. What? Are you going to keep fighting the nobility? I... I don't know if I can anymore. Today they showed me what they're truly capable of. I was naive. I thought that the truth would prevail, but... I'm only one person. I can't do this alone anymore. So you're just going to give up? You're the only one who will fight against them. If you're just going to give up, then... Was my mother's death truly pointless? I I'm sorry. Teach me how to be like you. What? You said that you can't do this alone anymore, right? Oh, there we go. We're age 10 here. So teach me how to be a defense attorney. I can help you. We can fight them together. Tyrion, you're just a child. I can't just... Miss Tamora, please. I don't have anything left. Please just take me away from here. You clutch your hand tightly, feeling the fading warmth of the final message that your mother left for you. It's the last comforting memory you'll have of her. It's a memory that you'll never experience again. Mom? You're startled awake. After some confusion, you realize that it was all a dream. You didn't have any trouble falling asleep, but your slumber was less than restful. It's been a while since you've remembered that day. That's all the more reason to leave this city as soon as possible. Celeste, are you up? Huh? Celeste was wistfully staring out of the window, watching the drain. Her head whips towards you, then she realizes that you're awake. Are you okay? What's wrong? N nothing. It's, it's nothing. He wasn't awake, was he? She doesn't seem keen on sharing, and it'd be best not to pry. Anyway, do you know if the city is still under lockdown? I, I haven't checked yet. I was waiting for you to wake up. You go outside and check the city gates. The blockade still hasn't disappeared. In fact, it looks like it's been fortified with even more knights. Looks like we can't leave yet. They've even doubled down on the guards. What's going on here? Tyrion! You spot Rika in the distance as she calls out to you. 
As soon as she sees you, she breaks out into full sprint towards you. She looks exhausted. Has she been looking for you in the rain? Dream, it's terrible. There, there was an accident to the Arcane refinery last night. One of my friends who worked there, he, he fell into a vat of chemicals. He's dead. Oh, Rika, I'm so sorry. If there's anything I can do... Lord Von Sanctus is blaming the Dracogen Trading Company. He's trying to cha charge the owner with criminal negligence. Hmm, as the lord of this region, Von Sanctus would have a lot of leverage in le a legal battle like this. He must be using this accident as an opportunity to oust Dracogen from his territory. Dirian, you're a lawyer, aren't you? Can you help them? I, I don't think I can. What? But... Rika, I specialize in homicide cases, and most of my clients are majors who've been charged with murder. I've never even tried a case like this before. There isn't any magic involved, and there's no killer. Don't worry, I'm sure that the Dracogen Trading Company knows plenty of qualified attorneys who can help. I'm not so sure about that. Think about it, a lord from one of the Four Pillar families is pressing those charges. Do you honestly think anyone else will try to fight them on this? She has a point. There aren't many attorneys who will go against the nobility under any circumstances. The only ones who will do that. The only ones who will do that are you and Mr. Mora. Alright, I'll see what I can do. Really? But please don't get your hopes up. I have very little information to work with right now. And to be perfectly honest, I'm really out of my element. No, that's okay. I'm sure that Mr. Dracogen will take any help he can get. Mr. Dracogen? He's the owner of the Dr Dracogen Trading Company. He should be at the old Arcane Refinery right now. Well, that must be the scene of the accident, too. It would probably be best to start your investigation there. I've been away from the shop for too long, so I can't come with you. But we'll drop by the cafe if there's anything I can do to help. Okay. You follow Rika's directions and move through the city's industrial district. It reminds you of your childhood, back when you couldn't control the Eye of Horus. You always avoided this part of the city. It was always covered with an overwhelming fog of misery and fatigue. However, you feel less of that now. Is it because you have more control over your powers, or has something else changed? All right, we're here. You arrive at the refinery and see that there aren't many people around. The few people you do see appear to be from the City Watch. Operations must have been halted after the accident. Wow, so this is an arcane refinery. I always saw this place as a child, but I never really understood what they do here. Those machines refine the arcane crystals that are used in artificery. Those crystals are used as a power source for conducting magical energy. You look around and spot an especially frustrated individual. He seems to stand out from the knights and cleaning staff. Could he be the guildmaster Rika spoke of? He takes notice of you as, he, as you head further into the refinery. Um, I'm going to make him Scottish because the, the Scottish one was a couple of cases ago now. Hey, hello there. You must be the attorney that Miss Judo spoke about. I am. I take it that you're the guildmaster of the Dracogen Trading Company. Hey, my name is Dafanek Dracogen, and I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. I really appreciate you lending your aid in this matter. Well, I already told Rika this, but I've never tried a civil case before. I'd need to learn more about what happened before I can decide whether or not I can represent you. I'm honestly not sure how much help I can be. Eh, yeah, well, it isn't a single attorney in Ordinax that will represent me. So I'll accept whatever help I can get. Celeste was right. All of the attorneys are too afraid to stand against Lord Von Sanctus. Where should we start, though? This case is probably different from the homicides that we used to. Homicide or not, the case revolves around a wrong revolves around a wrongful death. If I did represent Dracogen, I would need to prove that he wasn't at fault for the accident. To do that, we should start by finding out exactly how and why the accident occurred. We should also question the witnesses who saw the victim when it happened. And it wouldn't hurt to take a look at the scene of the accident, either. The Guildmaster would have a lot of knowledge about the refinery's operations. Questioning him might also give you some insight into what happened. Yeah, let's start by talking to him. To start, could you tell us exactly what happened? Hey, well, it all began during the work rush yesterday evening. One of my employees fell from the walkway and into a vat of magical chemicals. Those chemicals contain extremely volatile and destructive evocation magic. Yeah, because of that, he unfortunately died before we could have pulled him out. I see. But that all just sounds like an unfortunate accident. Why is Lord Von Sanctus blaming you for what happened? Yeah, there are guardrails on the walkways to prevent people from falling. Supposedly, those guardrails broke apart when that employee tried to lean against it. 
According to Von Sanctus, the accident was a direct result of my negligence to maintain the refinery. But my employees are taking great care to inspect and maintain the facilities. I have no idea how this happened. Is he telling the truth? This could all just be lip service. The only way to know for sure is to inspect the walkway yourself. Earlier you said that the victim was an employee of yours. Could you tell us more about them? Aye, well, I hired him just a few months ago. It's a shame what happened to him. He was a young man named Justin Way. He, oh, so was he a good employee? Uh, he was a hard worker, but he was a bit rough around the edges when he first started. Before working for me, I heard that he'd always spend his time with the local delinquents. Uh, his tutor practically begged me to hire him. She told me that she wanted to turn his life around. Hmm, that does sound like something Rika would do. She always had a habit of getting involved in her friend's personal business. When you live a life like Justin's, it helps when you have something to give you some structure and direction. So I decided to give the boy a chance by hiring him. He was clearly a hard worker. He did well to earn his keep. He always followed the rules too. So I had no idea why he was up in that walkway. Wait, he wasn't supposed to be on the walkway? Oops, um, no, 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 back. You, earlier you mentioned that Justin wasn't supposed to be on the walkway. What did you mean by that? Well, uh, Justin worked in an entirely different department. He was part of the team that managed packaging and freight. He had no business being inside the refinery building, much less the upper walkway. A strange to say the least. Was he the type of person to wander around places that he's not supposed to? Nay, nee, like I said before, he always followed my rules. It all just makes this whole situation that much more confusing. Okay, so he shouldn't have been where he was. Was there anyone around when the accident occurred? Did anyone see Justin fall? Yeah, there were many employees here at the time. But there were only a handful of witnesses who actually saw Justin fall from the walkway. Who were these witnesses? Hey, if I remember collect correctly, Miss Tudor was the one who saw him fall. Wait, Rika was here when it happened? Aye, she witnessed the accident alongside the hard room master. Morrison. Oh, you're acquainted with him? Uh, I am. Morrison was close friends with your mother when you were a child. But after you left Oranax, you went out of your way to cut contact with everyone from your past. But what were all of these people doing here in the first place? Rika is a cafe owner and Morrison is a harbour master. I am a little concerned about that myself. I'm still unsure about Miss Tudor, but the harbour master was accompanied by a nobleman of some sort. A nobleman? I am not privy to the specifics, but apparently that nobleman had the legal authority to go wherever they wanted to. Hmm, I want to ask Morrison more about that. But it will be awkward to speak with him after all these years. Uh, let's... We could examine the area. Detect magic. Oh, hello. There are traces of transmutation magic on this power box. Well, it is an artificery device. That's not too out of the ordinary. I'm not, honestly not even sure how these type of vats work. Perhaps transmutation magic is used in the refinement process somehow. Interesting. Let's just have a look at this stuff to begin with. These metal stairs lead up to the walkway above. You can get a better look at the walkway by moving there. Okay, fair enough. It's a power box. It contains artificery hardware and an arcane power cell. It's connected to the chemical vats, so it must control some function of the refinery. It's a vat filled with chemicals I can't identify. According to Celeste, these chemicals are used to refine and create arcane crystals. Okay, well, let's, um, let's move up to the walkway then. Tyrion, do you need me to scan for magical traces? Well, there aren't any magical elements in this case, but I suppose it wouldn't hurt to check. Alright. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so walkway. What? What's wrong? There are traces of transmutation all over the guardrails. Transmutation? Do you see those traces anywhere else on the walkway? No, it's only this area. Oh. Transmutation is a school of magic that changes the properties of physical objects. Usually mages use transmutation spells to strengthen and repair objects. And it probably weakened it. Someone used a spell to change the physical properties of the guardrails. Judging by the current state of the rails, we can only conclude one thing. Uh, Justin... 
We didn't know it was rust. The spell weakened the structural integrity of the guardrails, yeah? Right, so someone used a transmutation spell to weaken the guardrails. Afterwards, the guardrails were so weak that Justin accidentally broke them. And only these guardrails were weakened. The sabotage rails are right next to this vat of corrosive chemicals, too. What was the intention of weakening the guardrails? Judge by what happened, that intention can only be one thing. Uh, the unknown mage wanted someone to fall into the vat. Whoever sabotaged the guardrail wanted someone to fall into the vat. Or else would they only target those specific guardrails? But why? Why? Who would do this? You can feel your fist clenching tightly. Someone committed murder using magic here. And whoever did this had the gall to try and cover it up. Tyrion? You won't forgive whoever did this. When you're through with them, you will make them feel a fraction of the misery that your mother... Tyrion! What? Are you okay? Right, sorry. Anyways, if we weren't... If it weren't for your detect magic, everyone would have written this off as an accident. Magical traces are only detectable for 48 hours after a mage casts a spell. That means that whoever cast the transmutation spell did so recently. Right. Uh, and what about this stuff? There are traces of evocation magic on the chemicals in these vats. Well, that makes sense. Evocation is a school of magic for spells that create and disperse energy. These chemicals probably induce some sort of magical reaction to create arcane crystals. Okay, fine. Uh, what else have we got? Let's just look at stuff. Hmm, looks like the guardrail completely broke apart. The rails are completely rusted too. Was Dracogen lying about properly maintaining the site? It's a vat of dangerous magical chemicals. Supposedly, they're corrosive enough to dissolve anyone unfortunate enough to fall in. Celeste is watching you carefully. She can be a little overprotective at times. Okay, is there anything else to look at up here? Probably not. So let's um, let's move back down and have another chat with uh, what's his face, Stefanich. Oh, okay, let's talk about some stuff then. So let's talk about this. You should not. You should notify Dracogen about the traces of transmutation that you found. But perhaps you should wait until you obtain more information first. After all, knowing about a potential saboteur might unnecessarily stress him out. Even more so if you don't have more information. Okay, nothing real there. So, where do we go? Let's go and talk to Musarika about Justin, because we didn't realise that link, did we? And she was a witness too. You arrive at the cafe and see that the restaurant is packed with customers. You don't see Rika anywhere, though. She must be preoccupied. Perhaps you should check in when the restaurant's less busy. Oh, alright. Fine. Uh, we could go see the harbour master, perhaps. You arrive at the harbour in search of Morrison, the harbour master. However, you notice a large concentration of knights in the shipping area. Notably, the Arcane Inquisition is among them. It's what Commander White and Prosecutor Steelwind coordinating the knights there. I wonder what those two are doing here. The Knights of the Blockades said that they were investigating something. There must be magic involved if the Inquisition is here. Do you think this has anything to do with what happened to Justin? Well, I doubt it. We didn't see any Inquisition Knights at the refinery. It must just be a coincidence. Hmm, you're probably right. But I'm kind of curious about what the Inquisition is investigating. Well, it's nothing to do with our case. It'd be best to leave them to their business. Oh, all right. Oh, are you there? You best clear out. The Knights have closed the harbour. Actually, this is going to be the harbour master, isn't he? Let's make him a pirate. Hey, the knights have closed the harbour. Morrison? Huh? Do I know ye? Wait, Cuthbert, is that you? Noah Morrison, harbour master. Hi. I'd heard. I'd heard from little Musarika that you were back in town. What can I do for you? We heard that you were at the refinery yesterday. From what we heard, you witnessed the accident. We wanted to ask you some questions about what you saw. Oh, right. Musarika mentioned that... Oh, that's Scottish, isn't it? Um, Musarika mentioned that you're an attorney now. What? I just hope you're still not hung up over that business with your mother. Sorry, I guess it's none of my business. Anyways, I'll tell you what I know. 
Dracogen told us that you witnessed the accident. Hey, it was a horrible thing that I was gone Scottish again. <laughs> I think the pirate accent's too close to my Scottish, so it's gonna it's gonna switch. I'm gonna make him Brummy. Oh, it was a horrible thing that happened. No one deserved what happened to that poor lad. Could you tell us what you saw? Well, I was showing a patron around town. And for some reason, he really wanted to take a look at the refinery. Something about checking out the local artificery. Uh, he must mean artificery. Anyways, he was looking at the machinery. And suddenly, Muzurika came running towards us. She was trying to tell us about something. But the damn machines were too loud for us to hear her. After a while, she just pointed at the walkway. And we saw the horrible sight. We saw someone fall into the vat. By the time we could get them to stop the machines, it was too late. Oh, that matches up with what you know so far. What was Rika even doing there? She should have still been running the cafe at the time of the accident. And that patron who was visiting the factory, did they also witness it? Could you tell us how Justin fell off the walkway? Was it because the guardrail broke under his weight? Yeah, he did, but it was a little strange. That guardrail was made out of metal, yeah. But the way it broke, you would have thought that it was made out of cardboard. He barely leaned on it and it just broke apart. Even a poorly maintained guardrail shouldn't have broken that easily. Did someone really use transmutation magic to sabotage it? If so, that possibility could clear Dracogen's name. But presenting the possibility of a magical crime might just complicate things. You mentioned that you were escorting a patron when the accident happened. Who was he? Did he witness it too? Oh, he was right there with me when Rika was trying to get our attention. It'd be hard to miss it with the commotion she was making. As for who he was, he said his name was Aster. Aster? We don't know anyone by that name. That's um, Steelwind's fiance, we think. But why does that name sound familiar? Do you know what his surname was? No, the lad was really secretive with his last name for some reason. He must have had a recognisable name. Is he a noble from a well-known house? Uh, blockade. Why are you escorting this Aster in the first place? Don't you have to manage the harbour? Well, we can't really manage anything because of them. It gestures towards the Inquisition's knights crowding the pier. They've blocked all the sea travel out of the city till this mess is sorted out. They have a lot of knights investigating the harbour. Do you know what they're looking for? Well, you didn't do this for me. But according to them, Aster's ship just up and vanished in the dead of night. Vanished? As in someone hijacked it? Well, that's the thing. The guards would have noticed if someone had driven off with the ship. Especially one of that size. From what I heard, one of the guards could have sworn that they saw it vanish in a flash of light. A flash of light? Like something created by a spell? What kind of ship was it? Do you know how big it was? From the well, from the size of it, I'd say that it was probably a galleon. A galleon? A spell of that scale would have been pretty powerful to affect a ship of that size. I wonder who this Aster person is? It must be high profile if they're calling in the King's Guard and the Inquisition for him. All over a missing ship. You spent some time with him, am I correct, Morrison? Did he tell you where he was staying? For I remember right, he was staying at the local inn near the town square. Wait, that's the tavern that we were staying at. If he's this high profile, why is he staying at an inn for commoners? No idea, he's an eccentric one for sure. Whoever he is, he also witnessed the accident. You'll definitely want to speak with him. And if he's a noble, there's a chance that he's the mage that sabotaged the guard rail. Let's examine the harbour, I suppose. It's a modest ship, probably used by local businesses to transport goods by sea. I can't help but feel it like nostalgic seeing these ships. I used to travel by sea all the time when I was travelling the world. It was probably my favourite part. Hmm, oh, that does sound pretty nice. I'd like to try riding one one day. Are you sure? You get motion sick pretty easily. Sailing on a ship might kill you. Hmm, oh, she has a point there. Several crates containing all kinds of goods. They must be the merchandise of the local businesses. A row of houses lying the edge of the harbour. When I was a kid, I always dreamed of saving up enough gold to buy my own house in the water for a harbour front. Well, you have a job as an attorney now. You can always move back here. No, if possible, I never want to return to this city again. Uh, okay, let's detect magic. Yeah, nothing here. Okay. Anything else to talk to him about? I don't think so. Why don't we, uh, why don't we move, um... I mean, the tavern, if that's where he was staying. Morrison said that Aster was staying in one of the rooms at this tavern, but which room is it? We could always just check each room. That might irritate the patrons, though. And if Aster doesn't want to be found, we might alert him if we annoy too many people. Hmm, I guess you're right. 
Your family owns a tavern, right? If you were to put a VIP somewhere, which room would you choose? I guess it would probably be the one at the end of the hallway. That's the one I use at my family's tavern. According to Celeste's intuition, the innkeeper would probably have given Asta this room. You approach the door and firmly knock on it. Hello? Someone does come to answer the door, but they only open the door a fraction of the way. The crack in the door is less than an inch wide. You can't get a look at the person's face. I'm terribly sorry, but if your business isn't urgent, I'd like to be left alone. Sorry if I'm intruding, but are you Asta? My name is Tyrion Cuthbert. I'm the defense attorney of Stefanich Strakogen. From what I've heard, you're, you witnessed the accident at the refinery yesterday. I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions about what you saw. Upon hearing your name, the man fully opens the door, and you're finally able to get a good look at him. He definitely stands out from the other patrons of the inn. He must be the wealthy patron that you're looking for. Tyrion Cuthbert, the protege of the infamous Ruby Tamora. So you know who I am? I do. I know you very well. I'm... Your biggest fan! <laughs> what? Yeah, what? <laughs> I can't believe it! The infamous Tyrion Cuthbert is standing right in front of my tavern room! What? I've read all about your feats, Mr. Cuthbert. You successfully indicted the house head of House Pierce. You didn't think twice about confronting a member of House Frager. And you even defeated Lord Von Sanctus in the chess tournament yesterday. I'm so lost right now. And you, you must be Celeste McCoy. Tyrion's first client and the Crimson Demon of the Eastern Kingdoms. How did you find out about that name? The Crimson what? Ah, uh, don't ask. Anyway, if uh, anyway, if you are Asta, does that mean you witnessed the accident with the Harbour Master yesterday? Yes, I did. Are you going to interrogate me about what I saw? I'll answer whatever questions you have. You've never met a witness who has been this eager to cooperate. But hopefully this means he won't hide any details about what he saw. Let's quickly detect magic. Don't see anything. So, uh, Leah, let's talk to him. You clearly know who I am, but I'm still unsure of who you are, Asta. Ah, my apologies. But I would prefer to keep my full identity hidden for now. He's within his right to do so, but you can't help but feel a little suspicious. In any case, what is your business in Oranax? I was accompanying a ship transporting goods to Lord Von Sanctus. The same ship that was magically stolen. I'm surprised you found out about that. The Kingsguard may have been trying their best to keep that information hidden. But I suppose I shouldn't expect anything less from you, Mr. Cuthbert. Flattery will get him nowhere. What was on that ship? It must be pretty valuable to be worth stealing. Ah, I doubt there was anything on that ship worth drawing the ire of the entire kingdom. The truth is, during the time that my ship was stolen, I was supposed to be on it. I see. The theft of the ship might have actually been an attempt to kidnap you. That's my current theory, anyway. It wouldn't make sense otherwise. He seems awfully calm about this. According to Morrison, you were also in the refinery that night. Did you witness the moment the victim fell into the vat? I did. Could you tell us exactly what you saw? Every detail you remember could be important. Well, it all began when I was visiting the refinery with a harbour master. I was inspecting the refinery's machines when a girl frantically ran towards us. She was hysterical. It looked like she was trying to tell us something. But we couldn't hear her over the noise of the machines. When she realized that we couldn't hear her, she simply pointed at the walkway. That's when we saw Justin Way fall off of it and into the vat. The next question the next question is very important. Did you see the victim break the guardrail by leaning on it? Yes, he broke the guardrail before he fell. His testimony matches exactly with what Morrison saw. The way he fell was very strange, though. Strange? What could he mean by that? You mentioned the way that the victim fell was strange. Did you feel that guardrail broke too easily? Why, yes. How did you know? Well, it matches with the statement that the harbour master gave us. You don't want to reveal the traces of transmutation that you found on the walkway. At least not yet. But yes, the guardrail broke the moment that Justin leaned on it. And his body was extremely limp when falling, too. His body was limp? Normally, when falling from a great height, one would flail their arms, yes? But when I saw him falling, he wasn't moving at all. He wasn't moving. Did you see the expression on his face? He might have been unconscious. I'm afraid I couldn't see anything on his face. It was much too dark to make out his features. Wait, you didn't actually see his face? 
How did you know it was actually him that fell in? Well, who else could it have been? No one else has been reported missing. They also found the remnants of Justin's body in the vat. It was definitely him that fell in. Hmm, that's true. You don't have much reason to believe that Justin might still be alive. There were traces of transmutation magic at the crime scene, and it appears that Aster is quite a high-profile individual. He's probably a mage, and aside from Rika, he was probably the only other mage at the refinery that night. If you ask him outright, you might be able to see something incriminating through the Eye of Horus. Aster, we'll respect your privacy if you don't want to tell us who you are, but could you at least answer one question for me? I can make no promises, but I'll do my best to tell you what I can. Are you a mage? Oh, is that all? Yes, I am a mage. I'm quite the practiced one at that. You see, Celeste can cast... Uh, Celeste cast Detect Magic to look at the scene of the accident, and we found traces of transmutation magic at the crime scene, namely on the guardrails that Justin fell through. What? I... Here it is. I can't believe it! What? Are you telling me that a mage used transmutation magic to weaken the rails? It's a conspiracy. Wait, does that mean this was actually a murder made to look like an accident? It's like something out of the reports I read about, I read about him. You don't see anything incriminating, and you can see his thoughts clearly. His feelings of happiness are a bit off-putting, though. And you asked me if I was a mage? Does that mean that I am a potential suspect? Oh, this is the greatest thing ever to happen to me! This is the first time you've met someone that's happy to be suspected of murder. Sorry, it's not right of me to get so excited about something this serious. You must think less of me now. But it's like something right out of a mystery novel! That's not the re reaction you were expecting. Nevertheless, it doesn't look like there's anything incriminating in his mind. And the emotions that he was emanating were all positive. There wasn't a drop of fear in there. What could this mean? Either way, it looks like you found out everything you can from Asta. You should move somewhere else. Alright, Asta. Bye-bye, creepy Asta. Um, so, refinery we've done, walkway done, harbour done, cafe... Might be time to return there, but we, let's see what's in the town square, first of all. Where should we go next? Well, Rika was one of the witnesses that saw the accident. We've spent a lot of time gathering information already. We should check if she's back at the cafe. She might have new information. Yeah. We can have a little look around here first. Several businesses have opened up since the last time I came here, and they all seem to be pretty busy. Blockade is preventing people from leaving the city. Local shops will probably be getting a lot more business until the Kingsguard lets us out. It's a statue of some kind of daredevil. That's Ferdinand Dumont. A famous stunt performer and physicist. Two um, professions that go hand in hand. I heard he used to run shows here several decades ago. He'd always jump over large obstacles or crevices in some kind of wheeled vehicle. I heard he even tried creating flying machines near the end of his career. Flying machines? Yeah, I heard he didn't even use magic to make them fly. It's a shame the kingdom hasn't tried to develop his research further. Uh, we can try to take magic here, why not? I wasn't really expecting anything. But let's go to the cafe again then. Tyrion, you're back! Did you talk to Mr. Dracogen? I did. I'm still not sure what to make of him just yet. But after what I've seen today, I don't think I can turn a blind eye to what's happening. There were traces of transmutation magic on the guardrails. Regardless of their motive, someone sabotaged those rails with the intent of harming an employee at the refinery. If this truly was a murder, you have to find out who did this and why. I'll represent him in court for the criminal case. Thanks, it really means a lot to me. On that note, you were at the refinery when the accident occurred, am I correct? Yes, I was. May I ask you a few questions about what you saw that day? Of course, I'll do whatever I can to help. By the way, why were you at the refinery that day? Didn't you have to work at the cafe? I was making a food delivery to Justin. Wait, you were delivering food to the victim? Yes, he never had time to make his own dinner. So I always delivered him his dinner during his evening break. But that night I couldn't find him in the freight area, so I went looking for him in the refinery building. So the accident happened while you were delivering his food? Okay. Did you talk to Justin at all before the accident? I did. When I finally found him in the refinery building, he seemed busy. He told me to leave his food in the break room. He was busy, but according to Dracogen, he should have never been in the refinery building in the first place. Did he say what he was busy with? He said that he had a meeting scheduled with Mr. Dracogen. Well, that can't be true, though Dracogen didn't mention anything about this. Unless... We've 
gotten a, we've gotten a few witness accounts already, but I just wanted to double check. What did you see during the accident? Yeah. S sorry, I'm sure that it was a disturbing sight. Do you need to take a moment? No, it's okay. It happened after Justin told me to leave his food in the break room. It was my first time inside the refinery, so I spent some time looking at all of the machines. That's when I suddenly heard a strange sound from the walkway. When I looked to see what it was, I saw Justin fall from there. I tried to find someone to help him, but no one could hear me because of how loud the machines were. Before I finally got them to understand what happened, it was already too late. Did you see the guardrail break when Justin fell off the walkway? More specifically, did it break from Justin's weight? I'm honestly not sure. I was too busy trying to find help. You have matching witness accounts from Astra and Morrison. They saw the guardrail break. Having Rika also confirm that would be would have been helpful. But you suppose Astra and Morrison's statements will have to suffice. Rika's account of what happened is a lot less detailed than theirs. But she did see Justin before the accident. I still have no idea why Justin was on that walkway in the first place. According to Rika, he said they did a mit uh, meeting schedule with Dracogen. But this doesn't match with what Dracogen told you. Either Justin or Dracogen must be lying in that case. You've met Dracogen already, but you still have no idea what kind of person Justin was. Perhaps Rika can tell you more. Could you tell us more about the victim? What kind of person was he? He was a good person. He fell in with a bad crowd a few years ago, but he was starting to turn his life around. I saw how much he was trying to change, so I asked Mr. Dracogen to give him a job. I really wanted to help him change his life for the better. But his job just ended up killing him. Oh, you can't blame yourself for this. No one could have known this would happen. I guess you're right. It's hard not to think about, though. Was he the type of person to go places that he wasn't supposed to be? Mm, yet, not anymore. Not anymore? He really wanted to make a good impression on Mr. Dracogen. He always wanted... He always talked about following the rules. He even got mad at me a few times when I accidentally broke Jack Dracogen's protocols. Right, that matches up with what Dracogen said. But maybe he was falling back into his old habits. Perhaps Rika can tell you more about what he was like before he turned his life around. You mentioned that Justin fell in with a bad crowd before. I've also heard that he used to hang out with a band of local delinquents. Could you tell us more about them? Um... What? Rika, this information will help our, us with our investigation. I need to speak with the other people who knew him. Do you know where I could find his delinquent friends? I'm sorry, I really didn't know him that well. I should keep quiet, it might make him mad. Rika, are you hiding something from me? What? Of course not. What would the Dark Lord of Orinax possibly have to hide from you? Yeah, she's definitely hiding something. You'll need to argue against her if you want the truth. Okay, let's not... We haven't got a full psychological profile yet, so maybe we uh, present her with something? ask about that. What do you think about this, Rika? Oh, nothing to say. Okay, well, well, we'll ask her about everything, maybe. I'm terribly sorry for what happened to Justin. You doing okay? Yes, it's difficult to think about sometimes. You always hear about these things happening, but you never expect them to happen to people you know. B but have no fear. It will take more than this to bring down the High Arch Magi. She's reverted back to her tuny personality. Oh, okay. Well, we've got her profile now. So, let's do the argument. Musurika Tudor appears to be hiding something from you. She clearly knows about the bad crowd that Justin fell in with, but she's hiding who they are and where you can find them. You'll need to convince her to share that information with you. Start. Let's have a quick look at her profile. She will perform questionable acts to protect the people she cares about. She has your best interests at heart and will always act in a way that she thinks is beneficial for your well-being. She isn't very good at deception. She will often revert to her dramatic tuny personality when trying to hide the truth from you. Riki, you know about Justin's friends, don't you? Just be honest with me. I, I'm not hiding anything. I really don't know that much about him. I wasn't that close to Justin way. I may have, I may have delivered his food, but he was uh, just a customer to me. Uh, yeah. I might have believed that you delivered his food because he was a good customer, but that wasn't all you did for him. You saw that he was trying to turn his life around, and you begged Dracogen to set him up with a job. You wouldn't do that for a customer that you barely knew. Huh. <laughs> well, that still proves nothing. I am Musurika Tudor, High Archmage of the Cadmium Flame. 
is it so hard to believe that I do pity on a stranger? I only helped him because I'm a generous person. It would only be right for me to equip a commoner with the means to change his life. She's bad at deception, maybe we'll call her on it. You're not a good liar, Rika. You would have risked a lot by asking Drakogen to hire a stranger, especially a stranger with a dubious past like Justin. What if Justin fell back into his old ways? That would have surely brought about consequences on you and your business. You wouldn't take a risk like that unless you knew him well enough to trust him. Okay, fine, I guess we were friends. But like I said before, he was trying to leave his old life behind. He always kept his past a secret from me. He didn't like talking about the person he was back then. He wanted to forget about it, and I never brought it up. Uh, it's sort of true, we knew each other years before he... It's sort of true, we knew each... Hang on, let me close that. We knew each other for years before he told me about it. He always kept his past a secret from me, it's sort of true. Claims that contradict the displayed emotion? Rika, your statement doesn't match with what you're thinking. What I'm thinking? What's that supposed to mean? Uh, well, you can't exactly tell her that you're reading her thoughts. Oh. I, I doubt that, Rika. In fact, I'm sure that you were friends for at least a few years. With a friendship that old, I'm sure he would have confided in you about his past. What? No, you need to stay focused. Rika, I don't know why you thought you had to lie about this, but I need to talk to Justin's former friends. Is that really necessary? Yes, I need to know why he was behaving so strangely before the accident. His friends might know something about him that you and Dracogen don't. But that doesn't make any sense to me. There wasn't anything strange about the way he was acting. I think you're just overthinking this, Tyrion. Something strange about the way he was acting, this one? Rika, he was acting very strangely. I need to talk to Justin's former friends so they can explain this. I don't understand. How would talking to his former friends explain that? Oh, I... Okay, we got that one wrong. Wasn't anything strange about the way he was acting. <clears throat> you didn't want to overplay your hand before, but it looks like you don't have a choice now. Rika, Justin told her that he was heading to a scheduled meeting in Dracogen's office. But according to Dracogen, Justin wasn't even supposed to be in the refinery building yesterday. What? Rika, Justin might have lied to you. No, not yet. He would never do that. I need to know why he was up there. And so far, the statements that I've got from you and Dracogen don't explain that. I need to talk to the people who might know things about him that you don't. Okay. I'll tell you where you can find them. Just promise me that you'll be safe, okay? You've successfully persuaded Musurika Chuda. Sorry, I wasn't trying to lie to you. It's, o it's okay. I'm assuming you had your reasons. But I need to know where I can find Justin's old friends. You probably know already, but a few years ago Justin got involved with a local street gang. They'd always hang around the beach area. But one day they discovered an abandoned house along the coastline and they started spending most of their time there. A lone house on the coastline? Is that house, Tyrion? That's probably where you'll find Justin's old friends. So that's why you were being so secretive. What? I'm sorry. Don't be, you were just trying to look out for me, right? Are you going to be okay? I can go there with you if you'd like. No, it's okay, I'm sure you're busy with the cafe right now. And it's not as if I'll be going alone. All right, just don't push yourself too hard, okay? Yeah. Well, I guess we move on now to Abandoned House. You arrive at the old abandoned house. Upon looking at the home that you left behind, you're struck with a flood of memories. Oh, so it's Tyrion's old home. Those memories were once happy, but now they only fill you with grief. Quick check on the time of the video. I think we might leave it there for now as it's coming up to the hour mark. Um, feels like we might be heading to... Maybe some flashbacks, some insight into Tyrion's past and upbringing. That might be interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I, 
interested in it so far and hopefully you enjoyed it as well and if you have if you could hit that thumbs up button that's always appreciated as would be leaving me a you know a comment let me know what you think about this case so far um i don't know if we've met everyone so i don't know if we've met potential suspects yet but uh in terms of what happened i think we have a fairly clear idea that i think i don't think that justin was the intended target of what seems to be an assassination attempt i suspect it was dracogen and I wonder if things are going to point towards Lord Bon Sanctus. But, you know, let me know your thoughts anyway. And, um, you know, if you're watching this and have enjoyed it and haven't yet subscribed to the channel, it would be amazing if you could. So thanks very much, and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.